when Prometheus was given the um, chore of doling out the qualities to the animals on, on Earth, Epimetheus wanted to participate, and he forgot to give one to man, to save one of the qualities for man. So Prometheus uh, went and stole fire um, to give to us. It was our, essentially our first technology. And at the machine, when that shot goes off, I have an incredible sense of awe because you, there's no way to miss the power uh, that's happening in that release and you're just creating a, a little surface on the star. I remember writing the email the first time, I can tell you exactly, it was April 14th, okay, 20, uh, 2010, and uh, that was the very first shot. And so when we did that shot, I, yeah, I immediately this guy was telling me about Ed Nather, I, I sent him an email and a bunch of my colleagues and friends and I said, all right, today you were closer to a white dwarf star than you've ever been in your life. Um, and you know, instead of we're making measurements of this plasma, it's not similar to, you know, like in the sense of orders of magnitude scaling. This is a white dwarf photosphere, a chunk of star stuff, as Carl Sagan would have said. Right there, macroscopic chunk of star stuff. We just made it right there. At the time, I was working a lot with this concept of the divine feminine. As soon as I saw it, I mean, it was instantaneous uh, re reaction of, I must, I must paint this. You know, it was the first day of class. Uh, and Don was discussing it, and he put an image of it on the projector, and my eyes got huge, and I just, I must paint this. I perceive it very much as almost a womb, very feminine, very creationary. When you produce these conditions, and that Z-pinch happens, I always go, look through the window into the, the bay of the Z-machine, and that's, it's 20 feet by 108 feet or so across and the central chamber is where all the currents follow, you know, flows down there. You see this bright flash from the leak charge. Those flashes, each one has the energy of a lightning bolt in it. That's not the experiment. That's just what leaks out when you're doing the experiment. You feel a boom. I mean, it moves through, and then you feel the S wave. You rise and fall a little bit. And if you look at the seismic wave, uh, if you look out, in the dust, you can see these ring, concentric rings in the desert of dust going up from the seismic wave propagating outward. And, and in that moment, they're able to control um, how much energy they're using and what elements and create entirely new, uh, entirely new reactions that otherwise we would never be able to understand or study or access, which is it's, it's pretty awesome. I do, in my 301, class, we are, it's for non-science majors, non-engineering majors. So one of the things I insist that they do, they have, we have exams and all that other happy stuff that you know, is of limited use and value, but the main thing they do is they take our field of, of astronomy and connect it with something they're passionate about. So that's, what, that's when you learn. I'm looking, seeking to develop a way for art to uh, reflect this you know, techno-scientific sphere, these really exciting technological and scientific innovations that are literally changing our experience as humans and what it is to you know, understand the world around us. And, and they should be able to communicate. You know, and, and, and art like science and philosophy um, you know, has a capacity to redefine the world around us. And, and I suppose I'm just seeking a way to do that with my own hand, to participate in that. I think that vision is, is transmitted through her painting. Some of the people there at the lab, this is an everyday thing. They do, you know, a couple hundred shots a year. And so for them, they stop and realize, oh my gosh, this is an extraordinary thing. And it causes you to take a deep breath and step back and realize this is profound. I mean, I, and I teach my Astronomy 301 kids. I stood in front of them for the last 31, whatever the heck it's been, 30-some years, and I would say astronomy differs from its sister sciences in that it's an observational science, not an experimental science. This was a huge transition in my mind because now suddenly we're doing experiments on stellar plasmas. 
not 30 light years or 150 light years when you're looking at the stars five centimeters away.